This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello friends, welcome or welcome back. Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott, your friendly neighborhood furniture flipper. I am so excited to share this week's video with you guys. I love to work on a piece that's got a fun history and that's exactly what I'll be doing in this video. This old television cabinet has been passed around within my family for quite a while. Luckily it's got the original backing on it, so I took a quick look on Google and found out that it's from somewhere between 1950 and 1952 and used to hold a little black and white tube telly and a radio. But it doesn't look like that anymore. It's been completely gutted and now has this weird hodgepodge of different shelving and stuff on the inside. It's definitely still got tons of potential to be a great storage piece. So I asked my husband, Doug, for a little help swapping out the mess on the inside for some new clean MDF shelves and a proper backer board. Don't worry though, I am definitely going to reattach that little piece of history from the back once I'm done having my way with this cupboard. But for now, I'm gonna tuck it off to the side so I don't make a mess. I need to get started on my end of this flip by giving this guy a really good bath. I mixed up a bottle of Dixie Belle's White Lightning, which is a TSP cleaner, with some warm water in a spray bottle, sprayed it all over my piece and wiped it down. Once I was done with the cleaner, I went back over everything with some clean, fresh water to get rid of any of that TSP residue. Next up, I removed the door handles and any other hardware that was easy to get off. There is a lock on one of the front doors, but the key is long gone and it actually slides itself open and closed at random, so it can be hard to get into this cabinet. I decided that this would be a good opportunity to just lose that lock altogether. The veneer on the rest of this piece is in really great condition, but the bottom sections of the doors were bubbled, chipped, and peeling away. So I laid the cabinet down on its back so it was a little easier to work on. This was super loose, so I was able to get most of it off just with a flathead screwdriver. And then I grabbed a sharp edged painter's tool to get up under the rest of it. I'm gonna sand these sections smooth and once everything is primed and painted, you will never know that this veneer is missing. Next, I mixed up some Minwax High Performance Wood Filler. This is a two-part epoxy filler, so you mix together the base putty with this cream hardener. That activates the product so that it dries super hard. I filled in some of the deeper scratches and a few little nail holes here and there, and then I decided to use the same filler to completely fill in this lock hole. I put a little piece of painter's tape on the back so that the wood filler didn't ooze right through the door. And then I let this sit and dry really hard since this is a lot of filler in one spot for a good six hours before I came back to sand everything smooth. I used my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray sander with a 100 grit sandpaper on it to sand down that hardened wood filler and also give the rest of the piece a really good scuff up. I actually have an attachment for my sander that hooks it up to my shop vac and turns out that feature works a whole lot better if you remember to turn on your vacuum. Once I was happy with my sanding job, I used a damp rag to wipe away any sanding dust from the surface to get it ready for primer. I also decided that rather than taking the doors off of the cabinet altogether and removing all of this hinge hardware, that I would put some painter's tape over top to protect it from getting gunked up. I just stuck my painter's tape on and then used an X-Acto knife to trace around the edges. Thank you. 
I'm going to be priming with my favorite Bin Shellac Base Primer and a 4 inch microfiber roller. This primer is going to serve a few different purposes. It's going to seal up the raw MDF on the inside so that that MDF doesn't soak up all of the moisture from the paint and cause it to swell. It's also going to give me a nice unified surface for painting over the heavily sanded spots and the lightly sanded spots that still have some of the original finish on them and the spots that have wood filler. Otherwise, all three of those textures would absorb my paint a little differently. Lastly, the primer is going to block in any wood tannins that may want to bleed up through and discolor my new paint job. I let my primer dry overnight and then I came back out to the garage the next morning. I used some super fine 320 grit sandpaper to smooth out any roller texture that was left behind on my primer and then I wiped away that dust as well. Now I am ready for paint. For the inside of this cabinet, I'm going to be using Benjamin Moore Advance in the color Quiet Moment. This is an alkyd paint, so it's waterborne, but it acts like an oil-based paint once it's dry. It also has really incredible self-leveling properties, so I decided to apply my paint this time with a 4-inch flocked roller instead of spraying or brushing like I usually do. While I've got my head inside this cabinet rolling paint, let me take a minute to tell you about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their journey. They offer classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, woodworking, and so much more. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, Skillshare has classes to fit your level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from the community. I just started Charlotte Kwok's Ultimate Interior Design Styles, which goes through the basics of transitional, mid-century modern, contemporary, and farmhouse, and how to identify them. It's really helping me visualize my furniture as part of a full room design concept. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit in any schedule and it is super affordable with a yearly subscription that is less than $10 a month. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. For the outside of my cabinet, I'm using the same Bedmore Advanced in the color Rainy Afternoon. The inside is in a pearl finish, which is pretty matte, and on the outside, I'm using a semi-gloss finish. This has a built-in top coat, so I don't need to worry about sealing this at all. As soon as I'm done painting, I'm done. I used a zebra square brush to get my paint into all of the details that the roller couldn't get to. Unfortunately for all of the great things about this paint, it has a painful 16 hour recoat time. So I opted to rinse out all of my rollers and clean up my paint trays in between coats instead of trying to wrap them in plastic and keep them fresh and wet. When I came back out the next morning, I gave everything a light sand with one of my surf prep rad pads just to make sure everything was super smooth. And then I went back in with my second coat. While the second coat of paint is drying, let me take you inside and show you how I shined up this hardware. I added equal parts of water and plain white vinegar into a pot and then I added in my hardware and turned it on to boil for about five minutes. Then I pulled it out of the pot with some tongs and let it cool down for a few more minutes 
sprinkled it with some barkeeper's friend and scrubbed it down with some super fine steel wool. It shined up so nicely. Another day later, I moved the cabinet inside and there were just a few spots that were still a little bit streaky, so I gave those a third coat with a really small artist brush. I also peeled away my taped off hardware and it looks like I had some bleeding underneath. I'm not really shocked. <laughs> so I used my same X-Acto knife to scrape that primer and paint off of there and clean up the edges. Before I reinstall the poles, I wanna shine up the screws that are visible on the inside of the doors when you open up the cabinet. I gave them a really quick dab with some gold acrylic craft paint and then put everything back on. I also went ahead and screwed the original back piece back on so that this little historical nugget can stay where it belongs. But then I decided that I should jazz up the rest of the backer board a little bit too so that it looked nice and finished. I grabbed some Fusion Mineral Paint in Midnight Blue from my paint stash and painted the rest of the back to coordinate with this Navy Dumont branding. And that's it. It was a messy, tired old hodgepodge, and now it's a functional storage piece that's pretty nice to look at too. I can see this piece being used as a coffee bar or a liquor cabinet, craft storage, or even a spot to keep an old record collection. I know a lot of you are really interested in the numbers side of my furniture flips. So for this one, I have about five hours of total labor invested in this piece over the course of a few days with the drying time in between. I've got about $50 worth of material cost in this as well. And this is a piece that I would normally list in the 275 to $300 range. I am not going to be selling this piece. However, it is going to be donated to someone in need. Please make sure that you are subscribed before you go. It is totally free for you and it helps me out a ton and I will catch you guys next time.